Hi, I'm Aaron Runk, and today we're going to be doing a setup on a Haas VF1 machine. So first thing I'm going to do is I've powered on the machine from the back. I'm going to release my e-stop button, and I'm going to hit my power on. When doing this, it's going to power up the machine and give us the functions to everything on our screen. Once it's powering up, you're also going to see many messages come up on the board. You just have to give it a few moments, and once it comes up, we will get started. Now that my machine has come up, I'm going to reset my alarms. Once my machines have been, as my alarms have been reset, I'm going to close my doors, and on a pause, I'm going to push the button, power up, restart. When I hit this, my machine is going to come up. My table is going to go to the X and Y home locations. And then my tool number one is going to be put into my spindle. Once I have done this, I am now ready to begin my setup. The first thing I'm going to do on my setup is I'm going to call up an edge finder and I'm going to find the bottom left corner of my block. By doing this, I will be able to set my work offsets. So we'll come back to our screen. And I have to pull up, to pull up my tool, my edge finder is going to be in pocket number 10. So I will go into MDI and I will push it one more time. And I'm going to call it tool number 10. So I have tool 10, M6, and I will hit cycle start. It says my door is open. Close my door and I will hit cycle start again. Now that I have my tool call up, I have to turn it on. So in order to turn on my spindle, I'm going to delete the message that I just had. And I'm going to call up S1200 for my RPM, M3 for my clockwise spindle rotation. Notice how I'm putting the end of block on there before I hit enter. That way the machine is able to read it correctly. I will push cycle start. My spindle is turning. When I open up my door, you'll notice that my RPMs have gone down. This is a safety feature, but for the feature of this video, I'm actually going to have the doors open so that you can see what's going on. I will come up into my hand jog. You'll notice that I have a screen come on. Some of these screens are going to vary. Some of the older models will not have it. Some of the newer models will not have this style. To get out of my manual mode, I'm going to hit cancel and I'm going to come over to manual again and then I'll hit enter. Now that I'm able to use my axes, I'm going to put it into the X axis and I'm going to increase my increments to about 10,000. So that way I'm not going to spend all day getting over there. So like I said, I am coming to the bottom left corner of my part. I am now on the Z axis. Once I get close to my part, I'd say 100 thousandths to a quarter inch, I'm gonna come back over to my screen and I'm gonna put myself into a lower increment of 100 th or 1 thousandths. As I start coming towards my part, my edge finder will begin to get smaller and smaller on its run out. Once my edge finder has broke over, I have found the edge of my part. At this point in time, I need to move my Z up out of the way. So I will change to the Z axis. I will increase my increments up and I will be going in the Z positive direction, which is clockwise, so that I can come up off of my part. Now that I'm up off my part, I need to move in a hundred thousandths because the diameter of my edge finder is two hundred thousandths. To do this, I will go into my position page. I will push position one more time to go into my operator page, or I can also page down. This will take me into this page where my axes are highlighted. I want to origin out my Y axis because my Y axis moves forward and backwards when I'm standing in front of the mill. So I will simply change it into my Y axis and I will come over here to the origin button and push origin. 
from here I can easily move over 100 thousandths of an inch. Once I'm there, I know that the edge of my part has been found. So to set my work offsets, I will come up to my offsets page and I will push offset again until it shows up. These are some older offsets that were set. We'll clear them out by just hitting F1 to override them. On a Haas, it's very simple whenever you're setting it. I will highlight the Y axis and I will hit part zero measure. Doing this is gonna tell my machine to input this value into my variable. So now my machine knows that that location of the front of the part is seven inches, 848 thousandths of an inch from its home location. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for X. I'll go back into handle and I will change to my X location. I will move over. I will come down. I am now pretty close to my part. So I'm going to reduce myself, my increments, into the thousands increments, and I will begin coming over in my X axis until I touch the part. My run out will go slower, and then eventually it has broken over to the back. If you want to see the actual part break over, the, I'm sorry, the edge finder break over towards you, you can change your spindle rotation from clockwise to M4, which is counterclockwise. That way, when the edge finder breaks over, it will break over towards the front, so that is easier to see. So now that I have found my edge, I need to do the same thing. I need to go to handle. I want to go in the z-axis, and I'll speed up a little bit so I can come up off of it. Now that I'm off of it, I want to go back to my position page and let my machine know, for my benefit, that I am at X origin. Where's my origin? Right there. So now I know that the side of my edge finder is aligned with the side of my part, but now I have to come over half the diameter of the edge finder, which is 100 thousandths. So I'm going to be in my X axis again, and I'm going to come over to 100 thousandths. Now that I'm at 100 thousandths, I will come back to my work offsets page. I will highlight the X axis, and then I will hit the part zero set button again and it will put my X position into there as you can see both of those match so that is now 11 inches 466 thousandths from my machine home now that my work offsets have been set I need to load in my program to see what kind of tools that I need to be loading into my machine to do this I'm going to hit reset so it stops my spindle I'm going to go into edit mode. So in edit mode, I'm going to push F1. I'm going to come over and highlight the input output functions. I will come down to disk directory. Now on these machines, some houses will vary. So if we look down here, I'm going to input my USB into the controller. There is a light underneath it that sometimes will blink or stay on. Once it's on, you have to wait for it to go off so that it knows that the USB is loaded. So if I come back to my screen, I will hit right enter so that I can access the disks directory. With that being said, I have a CRC mill program. That is the program I'm going to be using. All I have to do is with that highlighted, all I have to do is hit right enter again, and that will come up. Now that my program is called up, that is my program, my CRC mill part, I can now hit edit one more time. And if you'll notice, my window came from over here to over here, and now I am ready to do this. For this demonstration, I am actually going to be using a one inch end mill instead of a three quarter, because that's what I have on hand right here. So before I load this into the machine, I need to check a couple things. The one thing I want to check is I want to check the outside diameter of this end mill to make sure that it is close to one inch. And if it is not, how close is it? So I'm going to take this and I'm going to use my micrometers. I'm going to come through and I'm going to find out 
that I'm pretty close to one inch because I'm getting on the furthest outermost points of this end mill. So with that said, I'm going to put my, end, my micrometers down and I'm going to load this tool into the, let's see, what pot do we have open? I'm going to load it into tool 12 pot for this example. So I'm going to go into my MDI. I'm going to remove the previous commanded codes. I'm going to type in T12 to call up tool 12. Once it's called up, M6 will complete a tool change. Remember to hit your end block and then press right enter to make sure all that goes up there. Now I will hit cycle start. After I close my door, my machine will take off. I now have tool 12 loaded into my machine. If I would like to check that, I can hit current commands. My current command screen will bring up tool 12 in the spindle message so that I am positive 100% that I am loading my tool in the correct spot in the machine's carousel. So with this being said, I need to be in a manual mode to be able to actuate my tool release button. So I will go into hand jog. It does not matter the orientation on this machine specifically as to which way it goes in. So I will push and hold. That tells me that my machine clamp is unclamped. While holding upward pressure, I will let go. Okay, so that means that my tool is secured. That draw bar has securely held it into the spindle. So now that I have that set, I need to set my tool length from off a one, two, three block. When I say one, two, three block, that means that this block is one inch by two inch by three inches on the top of my table. To do this, I need to clean off my table. I need to make sure that I do not have anything on there. I can also check my one, two, three block by scooting it back and forth against that surface. I can be able to feel if there's any interference with that table. With that said, now I'm going to handle over to my one, two, three block, and we're going to set the tool length of this tool. Now, if you will notice, when I set this tool, I'm going to bring it past my one, two, three block. I'm going to apply light pressure towards the tool as I am raising it up. It has gone underneath it. I have pulled my tool, my one, two, three block, one, two, three block back out from underneath it because I'm going to come down one more click. So now I should have some interference. I'm going to reduce my increments from ten thousandths to one thousandths, and then I'm going to continue to come up until my one, two, three block goes back underneath it. So applying pressure, very light pressure, I will come up until my tool goes completely underneath my one, two, three block. With that being done, that is the most accurate way to set the bottom of the tools. So I will come back to my screen. I will go to offsets. This is my work offset page. I need to be in my tool offset page, which is my tool links. If you notice, tool 12 has been highlighted because that is the tool that is in the spindle. You'll notice I have a Z position down here, just like on the work offsets page. However, I will be hitting the tool offset measure button. When I do that, that will tell my machine how far it is from the machine home to the top of that one, two, three block. From here, I am going to go to position and I'm going to zero out or slash origin my Z. Why am I doing this? I need to know where the top of my workpiece, because the top of my workpiece is zero. So as of right now, my Z plane, where all my tools are touched off of, is the top of the one, two, three block. I have to translate in a Z positive direction from the top of my one, two, three block up to my part surface. To do that, I have to zero out my location on the top of the one, two, three block like I just did. Now, 
I will handle up in a positive direction. I will handle over to my part. And using the paper method, I am going to come down and touch the top of my part. Notice that I am pretty close to my part now, so I'm going to reduce my increments from ten thousandths to one thousandths. I will put it into the z-axis and I will come down on top of my part into my paper stops moving. I am now very close to the top of my one my top of my part. So now I need to take and look at my screen and see what that value is. If I look at this value, I will see that it is two inches, 891 thousandths and zero tenths. This is a positive value from the top of my one, two, three block to the top of my part that I am machining. This is a very important number that must go in my work offset Z axis. It is not that number. It is not eight inches. That is the location. So I will go back into position and I will type in two inches, 891 thousandths. I will then go back to my offsets page. It does remember it and I will hit right enter. We can now see that my two inches, 891 thousandths has been inputted correctly. From here, I'm gonna come back to my tool and earlier whenever I was getting that, that geometry on my machine, specifically on the Haas, you'll look at the top, it says diamet, diameter, or diameter, I usually call it diametral. That means that I have to put in the diameter of the tool, which was one inch. So I will type in one decimal zero, and I will type that in. Actual diameter is one inch. If for some reason you came to this page and it said radius, that means the tool, the machine is set up for radial CRC. CRC being the diameter of the tool divided by two. At which point I would put that in as a 0.5 and then I would hit input and the actual diameter would still come up to one inch. With that being said, I'm now going to send my machine home by hitting zero return. I will hit the Z axis. I will close my doors and I'll hit home G28. My machine has gone home. I'm going to push edit to look at my tool list from here. If I need to set two more tools, five more tools, 50 more tools, I would still follow the same method. My method would be to call up the tool that I need come down and touch the top of my one, two, three block, go back to my offset page and I will hit the tool offset measure button and I would continue that process until I am done setting all of my tool links. Once all of my tool links have been set and all the diameters have been set in that secondary column, I am now ready to run my part. Let's say I have ran all my parts and I want to save this program back to the USB. We'll come back to our controller I will be in edit mode. I will also again push F1. F1 allows me to go to all these settings up here on the top page. I will move over to the input output function in the disk directory. That is gonna show me what's on there. However, I want to send to the disk. So I will highlight send disk and push right enter. This right here is a as an image of all of my programs that are in my directory. If you notice, there's an asterisk next to this one. That is the current program that I have pulled up. I want to send the current program. So I will simply highlight that program and hit right enter. It says it's sending. Okay. You might ask me if I want to override it might not. So once this goes away, if we look over here to the side, we will see the red light. It is still sending to my USB. Once that red light has disappeared, I am now able to safely remove my USB from its hold. And that right there is how you do a complete setup on the Haas VF1. Thank you.